I want to use this example shown here to uh, illustrate some of the typical examples that we do for water utilities. A regular simulation is like a snapshot. We're going to look at a pump being on, the pump being off, a fire flow. We're going to do like a 24-hour extended period simulation and a transient where the pump is quickly turned off. Uh, so a regular simulation, we've got three simulations. We're going to have this pump on. And then we'll run an analysis with the pump off. And of course, at that time, the tanks here will supply the water. And the third analysis, with the pump still off, we'll run a fire flow out here. And so we can run these analyses and evaluate how the system operates. With the pumps operating, the pressure, lowest pressure out here is 54 PSI. Near the pump station, it's around 73. With the pumps off, around the pump station the pressures drop down to 50s and here the pressures dropped about 5 psi so the tanks are st are supplying the system quite adequately finally we add another demand uh, fire demand of around 700 gallons per minute up here and we see that the pressures down below 20 psi too low probably which indicates that this distribution system can't uh, provide that much fire flow at that point However, the, uh, the real point here is that we can quickly make these evaluations. In just a matter of seconds, we can evaluate this type of behavior. Uh, we asked earlier, can you add a new user here? Well, we can very quickly add a pipe and a demand. Uh, it only takes seconds, and we can evaluate this. And in fact, here we see the pressure is only 23 PSI. So we can't evaluate, or we can't add a new user with a six inch pipe. Now if we do an eight inch pipe uh, we could quickly evaluate whether that would do the job. Uh, an extended period simulation is like a 24 hour simulation where the demands in a typical utility of course will vary high in the morning and high in the evening. Uh, pumps may be controlled off of uh, tanks. So there's a lot of, uh, of uh, flexibility here when you're running a 24 hour simulation. But again, these are easy to set up, and uh, you can evaluate the conditions that exist in your utility. When you run this, you'll see, for example, here's tanks. The tanks uh, go up and down. As the tank goes down, the pumps kick on. The tanks go back up again. Pressure variations from around here, 60, high of 68 down to a low of around 56. So this just quickly shows you the uh, variations that you get in your system over a typical day. Uh, another example you can do uh, is the uh, water age, which uh, we need to do because of the EPA Stage 2 requirements. Uh, this would be the maximum water age in the system because of the res residence time in the tanks. And in this particular system, the water age is averaging around 90 to 95 hours, except near the pump station where you get fresh water coming in from the clear well. Again, this is an easy analysis to set up and something you can do if you have a model. A surge analysis, uh, we saw earlier that if we shut the pumps off, the system behaves very well. But what happens if the pump trips? And that means it loses power and you get a very fast shutdown. Uh, we know it will operate, but in the period of time between where the pump shuts down and the tanks take over, what happens? Well, you can analyze this with no surge tank in there, which is the way the system would be, you get this kind of pressure variation. And you get all these negative pressures down here. And that's a very bad situation for water utilities. Negative pressures break seals. They cause leaks of dirty water intrusion into the system. That's not a good situation. If you put a surge tank here when the pump trips, the surge tank can provide water to the system. And here we get a very smooth transition. Again, you can evaluate this with your computer model. And this is why you absolutely have to have a computer model to uh, understand and operate your water utility uh, in an efficient and uh, uh, effective manner.